What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Last week we learned about how forehead sparing is an important factor to consider when evaluating a patient with facial paralysis. If you haven't seen that video, it will be linked in the description below. Today we're going to learn about why a central lesion to the brain will result in forehead sparing. All right, let's get to it. Okay, everyone, today we're learning why the forehead is spared in a central lesion. Let's get to it. So the goals of today, we're first gonna learn what is forehead sparing? What do we mean by that? Next, what do we mean by a central lesion? Next, we'll learn about the motor innervation of the forehead. So how does the forehead get control? And then lastly, we'll put it all together by learning why the forehead is spared in a central lesion. So first, what is forehead sparing? When we say the forehead is spared, we say, mean that it's spared from damage so that its function is still preserved. So for example, the forehead wrinkles and the eyebrow raising, that will remain intact. And that's because the forehead muscle, which is called the frontalis, that function is preserved. So if the forehead is spared, you can see here, we will still see wrinkles and the eyebrows will still be able to raise because the function is still intact. So next, what do we mean by a central lesion? When we use this term, we're referring to damage the brain because that's part of the central nervous system. And specifically, the kind of damage that we're going to be talking about is a stroke. So a stroke results when there's a lack of blood flow. So when blood can get to a part of the brain, there'll be death or damage to, to those brain cells. All right, now let's get into how the forehead receives motor control, how the motor innervation works. So here at the top, this is a representation of our brain. And then here is our face. The nerve cells are represented on this pathway and the nerve cells we call neurons. So the red is, if we trace it down, is providing control to the lower face. And the blue is providing control to the upper face or the forehead. And also notice that we have an upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron. This lower motor neuron in this case is what we call the facial nerve. So let's start with the upper face, the forehead. Notice that we have these blue neurons coming from both sides of the brain. So it originates from the motor cortex on both hemispheres. And then it connects with the lower motor neuron. Uh, so we would say it synapses here in this part of the brain, which is actually the pons. So this is where the facial nerve nucleus is located. And the pons is a part of the brain stem. So after this synapse, See this blue neuron continues down and provides innervation to the forehead and upper part of the face. The lower face is controlled by this red neuron here. So we notice that it's coming from the left side of the brain, synapses in the facial nerve nucleus, continues down and provides control to the lower face. So the key takeaways here are that the upper face is receiving bilateral innervation. So both sides of the brain are providing control to the upper face. However, the lower face is only being controlled contralaterally. So this red neuron only comes from the opposite side of the brain to control the lower face. Okay, so what happens in a central lesion? So like we said, it, say we have a stroke and say it happens in the left side of the brain. So that means there's damage at this point in the pathway. And so now we can trace down and see what happens. If we look at the red neuron that controls the lower face, if there's damage here, go all the way down, we would expect that there would still be deficits here. And indeed, that's the case. On the left side of the brain, we have a stroke. We're going to result in paralysis on the lower right side of the face. 
if we look at the blue neuron here, it'll go to control the forehead. So initially, we would think that we would also get paralysis on the right forehead. However, if there's a stroke here, this neuron will still be working. So we trace this down. That also provides control to the forehead. So we still have uh, the forehead muscle preserved on the right side. So what does this look like in the patient? Well, like we said, the lower right side of the face is going to have paralysis. So that's what we see here. But the forehead on the right side, because it still gets innervation from the same, it's a lateral side, is preserved. So we still have the raised eyebrows and we still see the forehead wrinkling. So that's why the forehead is spared in a central lesion. Now, just for reference, we can contrast this central lesion with a peripheral lesion, which would be all the other cases I discussed in my facial paralysis video. So in that case, we would have damage at this level, the level of the facial nerve in the periphery. And in this case, we would actually lose the forehead function because even though we get bilateral innervation above it, the lesion is below that level and there's no other pathway that can support the forehead below it. So peripheral lesion, we lose the forehead function, no forehead sparing. So now let's summarize what we learned. We learned that forehead sparing means that the forehead and eyebrow muscles still work. We learned that a central lesion is referring to damage to the brain, for example, in a stroke. We learned the forehead receives innervation from both sides of the brain. And so in a central lesion, the forehead is still going to receive innervation from the ipsilateral or same side, and therefore it's spared. If you wanna learn more, feel free to check out these references. And that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.